How's it going? Morning. Morning, how are you? Good, you? Good. Here. Nice car. Fifty-six is his well, it's his wife driving that. And a prowler too. It was her son's car, but this guy's really Chevy too, it's beautiful at SS. Like that paint. Swinger's nice too. I talked to this guy about a story car. Very nice car. Got it when he was 16. Built it himself in his driveway. Very cool.
Don Lydell with a 70 Dodge Dart. And that one's from Action Auto LLC. Auto Repair. Go over to the uh, east end of the field where the other cars are lined up. Okay, get your tickets ready for the 50 50. How much is it? 300. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. The car talking, the car telling the story of its life. So Jason's going to bring this car up and I'm going to read this story for you. Some of you might recognize me as part of the logo of the Sutton Valley Street Rods, which is on this banner here. I started life as a 40 Willys four-door sedan. The first part of my story is not known. My story really started in 1987 or 1988 when my buddy and visionary bought me and saved me from a life of being painted pink with pink and white interior. His name was Gerald R. Welby, or his friends knew him as Ron or Bog. Bogger bought me just before he was diagnosed with colon cancer. It didn't take him long to develop a knock in my old four-cylinder engine and give that heave-ho from my beautiful body. It was decided that when I was, when I would become what I am now, I was taken to a garage up on the hill and my front suspension was replaced with a straight axle and a nose in the air gasser look. That's cool. A 350 cubic inch engine, a 350 turbo transmission and 10 bolt rear end was set free from a 1969 Chevy Nova. The engine was sent out for a look-see and it was determined that all it really needed was a good cleaning and a home. The tranny was in good shape as well. The body was great and after a lot of sanding to get rid of that nasty pink paint, it was decided that I would be painted black or black lacquer as that, that was the only color that them Stoker boys would allow to paint on the hill. <laughs> you know that. Shortly after my paint job, my buddy Ron had to go into the hospital for surgery. Remove some, some of his innards. This put him down for a while, but not out. I spent, I think, almost a year in the garage sitting where Ron and my lacquer paint cured. Then all of a sudden, Ron was back with a mission. He dyed my pink and white seats and headliner black. Whew. I thought he was going to leave that nasty color. Ron sanded and hand rubbed my black body to an outstanding new shine that changed me into a new person. The engine was warmed up to a new look and few other things were added to finish Ron's idea of what he wanted. If it hadn't been for good friends like Alan Mitchell, Kevin Goodwin, Jerry Siemens, and many, many more members, of course, and then, of course, the Stoker Boys, I would still be pink and sitting on the Oneida Lake. Ron and the Stoker Boys and several members of the second rising of the Seven Valley Street Rods spent the next few years traveling to the NSRA Nets and several local shows. We went to Oklahoma City, Columbus, Louisville, and many more that I would never want. Ron started to get sick again. Uh, he got sick again on one of our trips, and we lost him in May of 1992. 
My story didn't end there, as I was left to Ron's stepson, Jason McCray, who's in the car now. Where his vision was a little different than Ron's, we went back up on the hill, and a fat man front cross member kit was welded in by Rick Edwards and put in my old bones, an independent front suspension added. Jason repainted my nose and added ghost flames. We were able to drive for a few more drive for a few more miles with Jason as he was raising a family and trying to start a new business. Stupid choppers. My life now seems to be sitting in a garage most of the time, and hopefully he will get my old bones back on the streets.